Hey, all you RC addicts out there. Today we're going to be doing a initial setup video of the Phantom 2 Vision Plus version 3.0. I just did an unboxing video on this, so if you missed that, there'll be a link down below in the description. And the first thing you want to do before you start putting props on or anything else is charge all the batteries. And the first one you want to charge is the big old 5200 milliamp phantom battery it takes a little longer than the rest of them and you're gonna to want to start charging this one right away so we're gonna get our charging box out our AC adapter basically plug it in the wall get that green light going on there and then we are going to simply plug it in to the side of it here there's a port right here and it just matches up only goes in one way obviously you stick it in there all the way and then automatically the built-in charging strategy inside of here will balance charge all the cells on here and it'll go along as a progress bar here until it gets full and then it'll shut off automatically so when you see this thing shut off you know it's completely done and you can pull a sticker off at this point also Let's see if you can see it my, my camera does not handle white very well but it'll go through it and it'll take a while also usually when the battery's totally dead i think it takes about an hour to charge that battery so we'll get that thing charging the second thing we're probably going to charge is the controller itself you have the ground station and then you have the controller we got charged yet but the controller is basically charged i just want to top it off make sure we're fully charged before we go off that first flight there's gonna be a lot of setup and and stuff like that so the way you do that is you take an, a wall ac adapter like this you might have from your apple products or whatever else these ones uh, charge the best over sticking it in front of your um, computer so we're gonna plug this into the wall we get a little bit higher amperage milliamperage uh, coming out of there available okay and use your supplied dgi cable and we'll stick it right into the bottom and it'll charge automatically and right there you see it powered up on there and we know that it's charging okay so while everything's charging we're going to assemble the phantom itself there's not much assembly required besides the props themselves and like i said in the phantom 2 all the motors look the same and they had a little black dot at the end now this one the threads are different colors so you see this one's black on here and then this one it's more of a silver on there you can see it it's not that, not that much of a difference it's probably easier to see in person but you can see it lighter much darker okay so all you got to do is match those threads up to the proper color blade the center cap on here and then you simply tighten, tighten them on like that that's all you got to do after that it'll tighten by itself so we just go on to the next one this one's silver we know okay and you're going to do the same thing if it doesn't tighten the way you spun it just spin it the other way and just spin it until the motor starts spinning with it and you can go on to the next one it's that simple for these there's self tightening on there just make sure you're putting the proper color on there obviously it's kind of foolproof i mean it only screw on one way and uh Then we'll go on to the last one here. Now this is all you literally have to do is, 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 is spin them on like this. But I personally like to hold the motor and give them a little bit extra with my two hands. That's just me. But they will self-tighten the whole time it's flying. So it's very nice for traveling. You can literally uh, pull these off and put them back on without any tools even after the, the, the quad has flown. But they do give you a tool to hold it hold the motor see you stick it right in here and it'll kind of hold it while you take it off and there's also directional arrows on here to tell you how to turn it uh, to take it on or off tightening or loosening depending on where it's at so that'll give you information too so you can look okay if I go this way it's tightening if I go this way it'll be loosening and once you break torque on it you can just spin it off and take it off so it's very easy for transport also it's very nice 
Okay, so onto the camera itself. It has a little lens uh, cap, which is very good to keep on whenever you're not using it, obviously. But then there's this little shipping tang right here. Personally, I'd leave it on until you go to the field to fly or wherever you're going to fly. And then I'll make sure that the gimbal doesn't get messed up on here because that's very delicate brushless motors all over on here. But in order to take it off, you just simply hold the camera, okay? And then we're gonna pull it to the side here. See that right there? And that will allow it to go free at that point. And it is a very small camera on here, but everything else, all the rest of the electronics are up in this main board here and all that, so it doesn't require that. And so this thing moves very, very well. And what's really cool is that you can't just look up and down, you can look left and right. Now same thing, going back on, it'll clip onto the camera base there and just slide it over and it'll kind of lock itself in. It actually goes in very easy, uh, taking it on and off once you get used to it and it's a very good idea to keep it on there whenever you're not flying. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do after all the batteries charge, the ground station, the remote, the, the phantom battery, everything's topped off, we're gonna bring it over your computer and we're going to uh, set up all the software on here, all your parameters on the phantom itself. And then if there's any software updates, I highly recommend you do software updates uh, before going out. And the last thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to calibrate this thing before you go out especially the first time, but it's always a good idea to calibrate every time you go into a new flying field, but especially that first time because this thing was manufactured somewhere totally different than where you're currently at, and you need to be calibrated for your current area of the compass on there. So we'll go over that also once the batteries charge. Now I just want to show real quick how you can tell the battery status on here, uh, how far it's been charged. Same thing as the, the Phantom battery. Uh, it's off right now, right? You can see we've got power. We're obviously trying to charge it. You can turn it on. And it'll show you it's charging. Same thing as the other one. So you know kind of a current status on that also. So we're going to let all this stuff charge up, and then we'll start doing some updates. And this right here, once its LED turns green instead of red, while the controller's off, you know the controller battery internally is fully charged. Now for the ground station or Wi-Fi extender, whatever you want to call it, we got to charge that next. We can get a link to our video on there. And same thing, make sure it's off. And then we're going to plug the micro USB into the side of it and let it charge till the status LED changes on there. And you can see we're starting off red. Hopefully you can see that, maybe not. And uh, let that charge also. As you can see, the big old phantom battery is still about halfway through, three quarters of the way through. So um, definitely get this one charging first. Now on to software updates. Okay, now with the Wi-Fi extender all charged up, the light has turned green on there instead of red. And according to the manual, that thing can take three to four hours to charge, actually. So uh, this one took about two hours to charge, but now it's done. So we're going to go over, connect the remote up to the computer, see if there's any updates, and then start doing our calibrations.